Good morning. Good morning, all. Happy Advent. It is good to be with you this morning, even virtually. And welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge, New Jersey. We are so glad you are joining us this morning. It is indeed the first Sunday of Advent, and I hope you all have something that can be used as Advent candles, or hopefully you contacted Linda and got your Advent wreath and made it. And we thank Linda Thorstensen for all of this um, coordination. It is good to be with you all. Um, there are not a lot of announcements this morning, other than the fact that next Sunday will be virtual as well, and next Sunday will also be Communion Sunday, so please remember that. Let us begin our worship this morning with our prelude. Let us hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, nor ear has perceived, nor eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth we all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. And now let us light our first candle of Advent. And let us together 
pray. O Holy One, we light this first candle, a candle of grief in the midst of the stories of the last year. Let it burn through these weeks as a beacon to become the light of hope. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst. God be with us in this light of hope. And now let us also pray together our prayer of invocation. Almighty God, as we begin this season of Advent, remind us again that in the midst of our darkness, you are bringing us hope to inspire our anxious spirits and renew our lives. Turn our hearts again toward you. Make us ready to receive Jesus, our Savior. Be with us in this waiting time and give us the blessing of your hope in our spirits. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As the, as the holidays arrive, we have already gone through Thanksgiving, albeit in a very different way than we are all used to. We already can sense the stress of the holidays. God calls us to live our best lives. And sometimes among close friends and families, our best lives are not always seen. So let us together turn toward our God and pray our prayer of confession. Holy God, we seek signs of your presence in our world and in our lives. We know that your signs are all around us, and yet we miss the signs of your inspiration. We find signs of gloom and doom, but we should be looking for signs of hope and triumph. Forgive us, merciful God, when we spend so much time looking for the scary things in life. Focus our attention on ways in which we can be of service to our world. Forgive us when we seek the darkness of anger and fear and turn our backs on the light of possibilities. Open our hearts once again to your redeeming love, inspiration, and hope. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ we are made new. We are healed and forgiven. We are challenged and guided to become those who work for the better rather than those who would destroy and damage. God calls us to be God's people and we are eternally grateful. And let us pray that our hearts will respond this morning to God's words. Help us to pay attention to the many things in which you enrich our lives, O oh God. Amen. This, the gospel reading this morning comes from Mark. This is your little um, educational piece. It is the first Sunday of Advent. We are in um, a new year, so we can also say Happy New Year because we are starting a new year of the Christian year, and it is now year B in the lectionary, so we have left the Gospel of Matthew, which is year A, and we are now in the Gospel of Mark, which is year B. There's also a year C that has the Gospel of Luke. So we are starting our second year of our three-year cycle. So listen to these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, 
and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves for home he, and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all, keep awake. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. Pay attention. That is what Matthew, Matthew, see, I'm still stuck in last year. That is what Mark is telling us. Pay attention to the signs all around us that are showing us that God is near. Now, if you're like me, at this first Sunday of Advent, I don't know how much I'm paying attention because I'm weary. I'm weary of changing the way I do things. I'm weary of taking precautions. I have a great Advent mask and I'm tired of wearing all masks. I'm weary of seeing the numbers keep going up as more and more of us get infected with COVID and pass away. I'm weary. I want things to go back to normal so badly. And yet, we keep getting told, wait, wait a little longer. Yes, it's bad and getting worse now, but on the horizon, not that far away, is the light at the end of the tunnel. We hear about vaccines, we, we hear all of the possibilities, and we are so ready. We are waiting almost impatiently for that time when we can go back to live lives that are pretty much normal, and yet it's not here just yet. And that's hard. And that's frustrating. And it's really hard. And yet, that's what we need to do. We still are not safe yet. We are still waiting for the time when it will be safe again to gather in person. 
and we had our reprieve, and so it almost feels worse this time around. And yet, we hear just a little while longer, just a little while, by the beginning, first quarter, beginning of second quarter next year, things will be different. And yet now, we have to wait. We have to pay attention. We have to do all the things that keep us safe to get to that promised land and time. We are, as a world community, in an Advent time. We are waiting for our lives to change drastically again. And so we wait with hope and expectation as well as frustration and fear. I think this year, one of the gifts that this year is giving us is that we can now fully relate to what it must have been like for the people to wait for the coming of the Messiah. They wanted their lives to change. They wanted that security. They wanted that hope. They yearned for that way that God would show them that God was with them always. We now understand it in a whole new way. For we understand this yearning, this waiting, the frustration, the exasperation, all of those feelings that we have, waiting for our lives to become whole once again. That's Advent. We light candles, we prepare, and we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to the signs all around us that show us that our God is with us, inspiring us to live lives that remind the rest of the community and the world just a little bit longer. Just keep holding on. The day is coming when our God will be with us yet again here on earth. It is exactly like, just hold on a little longer and we will be through this hard first time of pandemic. Just hold on. And in the meantime, let us pay attention to all of the signs that remind us that we still are community with each other. I know it's hard not to worship in the sanctuary. It feels strange to be sitting in, in the sanctuary and looking at a screen and not looking out. And yet we do this so that when we gather again, it will be all of us and we will be safe. We do this because we are part of a community and we act not only for ourselves, but for each other. That's Advent. We together wait. We together hope. We together share our frustrations and our exasperations. And we say, how long, God? 
how much longer? And our God says, just a little more and I will be with you in a whole new way. So be prepared, stay awake, pay attention. Advent is here. Advent will show us ways to live God's love in a time that's hopeful and hard. And when we do that, we will continue to show God's love and we will make room for the Christ child once again. Amen. the time of our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. If you type them in in the comments, I, I will make sure that I see them. But we do have a few. Um, we, um, we pray for Colleen Degliomini. Um, she is going in for tests tomorrow morning and is very concerned about them. So please keep Colleen in your thoughts and prayers um, and her family. Um, Joanne Good um, did write in the comments earlier that one of her patients came down with COVID so badly that she had to send him to the hospital. So we keep him and his family and Joanne and all of our doctors, nurses, and first responders in our thoughts and prayers. We do pray for, for us all this morning as rates nationwide are going up we are all tired of it. And so we, we pray for everyone to, to think about others as they make decisions so that we can all be safe. We also pray for all those people who are traveling back to their homes or where they need to go next after the Thanksgiving holiday. I don't see any others, but if they come in later, I will make sure that they get noted. 
with all that is on our hearts and our minds. Let us turn to God, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. In some ways, we can't believe that it is already the first Sunday of Advent. This year has not been anything like a normal year. And yet, Holy God, break into our hearts in this different kind of year to remind us of your great love and care for us. Remind us, Holy God, of all that you give us each and every day. Remind us of the beauty and the power of the small things in our lives. And may our quietness lead us to discover new parts of you and your love. It's hard, Holy God, for we are trying to do so many different kinds of things. We are trying to do everything that we would normally do at this time of year, and we keep having to shift. Be with us. Give us good humor. Keep our flexibility muscles going. And may we all be able to share the laughter of this time and this year with others. Holy God, there are so many things that weigh heavy on our hearts. On this day, we pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray for all those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, for all those people who wrestle with questions that seem so large and answers that seem so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, Holy God, for everyone who freely gives of themselves in so many ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, Holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and hatred and war, and that your peace and justice and mercy come to all corners of our earth. Lead us and guide us, Holy God, to be your people. Faithful, hopeful, ready, here and now, so that we can respond to the needs of our community and the world with open hearts and open hands. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Yet again, we worship separately, and yet our ministry reminds us of our connectedness. God of inspiring hope, as you have shined the light of your love into our lives, may the same brightness of your love be revealed as we minister in your name. Please remember that you can mail your offering in or you can send it online because our, our ministry continues in so many ways. And let us together bless all of our gifts, gifts of time and talent and money. Bless these gifts, Holy One, and help them to bring the transforming love you have given us into ministries of hope in our world. Amen. It was good to be with you all this morning. Please remember next week is also online or virtual only. It is also Communion Sunday, so bread and juice or something that can symbolize bread and juice. I hope you had a very blessed Thanksgiving and happy Advent. May all of our hearts grow ready to welcome the Christ child. And now, the light of the candle of hope goes before us, lighting our way in a darkened world. Go into the world, confident in God's presence with you. Bring the words and actions of hope to all God's people. May God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, which is our inspiration, be with us all this day, this night, and all our days to come. Amen. Thank you for being here. Have a good week. I will see you next Sunday. And I'm going to say it this way, same bat time, same bat channel. Take care. Bye.